Thank you. Th thanks for staying, even if I'm the last speaker before lunch. So I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Florida. And this talk is about the life of our online calculus initiative. It all start, uh, I will talk about what it is and what it is not. So we started in February 2010 when our provost, Joseph Glover, called a meeting and decided and, and an announced that he wants an online calculus text as a cheaper alternative to the available commercial textbooks. We used the Stuart textbook back then. So this is an early point. Maybe I still have everybody's attention. Uh, this is a good time to announce that it is only the text that goes online. We are not intending to replace calculus education by an online only um, education. So there are still lecturers and that's, that, that, that will be like that in the foreseeable future. Okay, so the provost provided funding for the first semester for Calculus 1. Um, and he, he, he made us face a difficult decision. Namely, he, he, gave, he gave us a certain amount of money and he said, divide it in any way you want. So we could have decided that 10 people will write the text or just one. Now, I'm very glad that we made the decisions that we made back then. I would do the very same thing again, which was that we had two people, Sergei Shabanov, my colleague, and myself. He was the, the teacher of the year for all of the University of Florida in 2009. Now, imagine that for a math professor. Right? It's not exactly everybody's favorite subject. Um, so don't have more than two authors for the text, because even two is plenty as far as mathematics or other sciences are concerned because people use their own notations and if you have to collaborate, them, if you have to coordinate them, you're bound to make mistakes every now and then. You're bound to overlook certain things that I denoted that way and he denoted that way and that will be a disaster for the student. Um, on the other hand, in calculus, of course, the solution of exercises is just as important a skill as knowing the theory. So the exercise part is about as important as the text itself. So if possible, don't, don't assign that to the writers of the text as well because it will be simply too much work. So we had ad additional money from Lockheed Martin for that and we used it for additional exercises. So we wrote the first semester pretty fast. Um, so we, we were assigned to this task in February of 2010 and we were done by April. So then the test was reviewed uh, by people who were hired by the University Press of Florida uh, and then it, was, it came out and it was class tested by one section taught by our department chair, James Kiesling. It, it, was, a, you know, it was one of the best calculus sections that we had so we, di we didn't just pick a random section. We, we, we tried it with the good students. Um, then it seemed that the good students didn't mind. We will talk, I will talk about the student um, feedback at the end of my talk. Uh, at the same time, the University of Florida Press, U University Press of Florida provided funding for, for Calculus II, and I'm sure Meredith will tell us later um, why, you know, what was their interest in the project. So in January 2011, we went live. So all of Calculus 1 at UF used our textbook. Now, we are a big university. 1,500 students take Calculus in each fall, 1,000 each spring. And I don't know the number for the summer, but several hundred still. And here I will, what, what I say now answers one question that somebody asked after the earlier talks today, after one of the earlier talks today, namely, the students can freely access the text online. It doesn't cost anything. They can buy a paper version for about $30. However, when they register for the course, they, they, they pay $15, but they are at least officially not paying that for the book itself. The book itself is free. They are paying the $15 for a maintenance and service fee. We, we do look at the book regularly, and if, if there are errors, we, of course, correct them. If there are things that should be adjusted, we do that. If there is need for additional exercises, we do that too, and so on. And it's for that that the student pays the fee, which apparently, I, I mean, 
I'm no lawyer, of course, but, but this made the whole thing possible. It seems that our pro provost had rather good ways of getting around regulations which would have made this whole project impossible. For instance, paying a faculty extra uh, above his or her salary is like next to impossible, but for this project it happened. Again, maybe the fact that the provost wanted it helped. Um, okay, so yes, in the spring, in, in spring of 2011 we wrote calculus too. Now, I don't know, you know if the non-mathematicians here know that, but calculus 2 is much, much, much harder than calculus 1. So it's maybe a little bit unfortunate that it's, it's, called, it's called almost the same thing, but it, it, it's a big difference. It's not just that one vertical line there from <laughs> one to two. <laughs> so Calculus 2 was class tested in fall 2011 and it only went live now. So now in, in January of, of, of 2012, all of University of Florida students who are taking Calculus 2 are using our book. Of course, because of that, we don't have much data on how happy they are. Uh, and I cannot wait to hear that data because I expect that to be very different from the data from, for Calculus 1. And then by this time, so now we are talking about spring of 2012, so Calculus 1 has been used by all of University of Florida students uh, for over a year. So that generated enough maintenance and service fees to fund Calculus 3. So that's in the project, of, in, in, the, in the phase of being class tested and, and it will go live again sometime in the near future. I, it might be in ne next fall or it might be next spring. Um, yeah, so now the challenge. So again, a very important point here is that as all books, our book will get criticized too and that's fine, I'm used to it. This is my fourth book altogether. Um, but when you listen to the criticism, please make sure that you distinguish whether the criticism is directed at the online nature of the book or simply just at the book. And, and you would maybe get the same criticism if it was a book on paper. Okay, now every, every book that is worth writing uh, has a concept. The author has some unique view of looking at the things because otherwise why do it? So students and faculty will occasionally disagree with the concept, but then they would disagree with the concept if it was a traditionally written book too. So if that's the case, then just make sure you know that, that, that it's not because the book is online that there is that problem. So we had a concept, which of course, again, people are free to disagree with, but that was our concept, namely that we wanted the student to actually understand what he or she is doing, even if it's calculus. Okay, and by that we mean that we, we wanted the student to understand the concept as opposed to just look for the right example and substitute. You know, like if you put in 15 examples into each section, then the student will be tempted to do that. And so we said that there is such a, it, it might be, you know, sacrilegious to say that, but, but there might be such a thing as too many examples. So it might just be that, that it's better to have just three or four but spend more time on the concept. And then when the student is, fa because uh, after all, no matter how many examples you, you include, there, there will never be enough examples to cover every possible situation. So it's maybe just better if you teach the concept and then the student will deduce from the concept what to do, as opposed to look for the right example to change the numbers in. So that's why the book is called Concepts of Calculus. Okay, I said that already. Um, so some students complained that there were not enough exercises, but that, that's easy to help. So again, don't forget that the book was written, Calc 1 was written essentially in two months, by two people, that's true, but still. Uh, commercially um, available calculus books take five years to write. We, can all, we, we kept adding exercises. Web assign is a very serious component of our project, and. We, have, we are a big department, so occasionally we can save a teaching assistant from teaching and assign him or her to this project, just, just to put ex more exercises that we provide into WebAssign. Uh, Some students pointed out that the book was too formal, which 
uh, here I stand corrected, but uh, again, we did three or four pages per section. Um, there is not much wiggle room there to go too far off the topic. Again, if, if, if this com complaint didn't come ju just from a few students, if, if it came from, from a significant part of the student body, then we could help that too. Um, yeah. So here is an important piece of data that, that we got from a, the Calculus One students. That half of them, or little, a little more than half of them, don't use any books at all. So they, they just survive by what they hear in, in class. And they, they, they learn the access, they, they, they figure out how to solve the exercises. So I'm sure that that is because calculus one is, is quite easy, especially if you were good at math at high school. It, it, there might not be so, much new, so many new things in it. I mean, m some people can do it with their eyes closed. But, but calculus two, no, no. From, so calculus two has some things that, you know, if, if you, if you ask a test question uh, from, from a Calc 2 exam of a professor of mathematics who didn't teach that class in two years, then he, will have to, he or she will have to think about it if, if the question is of a certain kind. So, so that is a different level. It's a, it, you, you have to be more autonomous. You have to be more, crea more creative. And so for that reason, I cannot wait to, to get the data on Calc 2 and Calc 3 students, namely how happy they are with our book, are they happier or less happy than they were with the commercial textbooks, and what are the strong and the weak points of, of our Calc 2 and Calc 3 tests. So that, those data we will not have at least till the end of this semester with Calc 2 and at least till the end of the year with Calc 3. So the University Press of Florida helped us a lot and is helping with the publishing tasks, which, which is very good because we got professional uh, um, proofreading and, and designs and all that. There's one price to pay is that we cannot quite adjust the text as often as, as, some, of, as some people thought we could. So if, if somebody says, oop, there's a typo there, then you, I mean, you can of course change it, but it will not immediately be, be visible for everyone. But that's just the price that you have to pay. Um, but even with that, we, we, even with that, the cycle is much shorter than it was with a commercial publisher. Now, another thing, and this is probably the biggest reward, is that our market is the University of Florida. I mean, other people can use the book, of course. It's, it's out there on, on the web for free. But our, our goal was to make it as useful for UF students as possible, which is quite different from the commercial model because I know that I, 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 I am an author for other publishers too. So what happens there often is that the first edition of a textbook is what the author wanted. He, had, he or she had a concept that I think combinatorics has to be taught this way, so I will write a book that way. Very good. The second one is, the second edition is uh, the correction of errors and some reaction to, to some, some feedback. And the third edition, and every edition after that, is covering more and more of the market. So here we don't have to do that. He, we don't want to extend our market in that sense. So our, our market is the students of the University of Florida. We know, how, you know, they are good students, sometimes not great, but good students. We, we know their strengths and weaknesses. We know uh, approximately how many percent will be in this percentile and so on. Um, and we can just try the book exactly as we think that it will be useful for them. Um, a few suggestions. If you can try starting with something smaller than UF calculus, okay? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a big one. Um, again, we had some pressure from the high administration to do it fast, so maybe, maybe some of us would have preferred it a little slower. It seems that the person, there will be one person at your university who will be at the crossfire, who will get all the complaints and not much of the rewards. It will not necessarily be the authors. Uh, it's not at, at UF. But, but there will be somebody, maybe an, an associate chair or a, an undergraduate coordinator or someone 
So before you start something like this, make sure you are aware who that person will be and whether that person is equipped to handle all that that comes with it. Thank you.